I'm Dr. Lauren Stryker, and on today's Inside Information, I'm going to give you the lowdown on lubes. And this is part one of my series on options to alleviate painful intercourse that can be a consequence of vaginal tissue that's thin and drying during menopause. And if you haven't watched my video yet on genital urinary syndrome and menopause, you may want to check that out first. Most women, when they first experience sandpaper sex, the first thing they do is they head to their medicine cabinet to see what they can find at home to make things more slippery. And one of the first things most women pick up is baby oil, which makes sense. It's slippery, it smells nice, it feels nice, and if it's good for baby's bottom, why wouldn't it be good for your bottom? The problem with baby oil is that it's oil-based, and oil-based products have a few issues. Number one, they're not condom compatible. So for women who still need a condom to protect against sexually transmitted infection or maybe even pregnancy, this is not the way to go because it can cause cracks, leaks, and holes to occur in the latex of condoms. The second thing is, is that while most women do fine using baby oil, a lot of women actually have an increased risk of developing a yeast infection. Now the second product a lot of women go for is Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Again, use it all kinds of places on your body. Good for these lips, good for those lips. Same issues, not condom compatible, and it may increase the risk of infection. In this case, bacterial vaginosis. After women find that what they need is not in the medicine cabinet, the next place they generally head is down to the kitchen. And I always say, if you use it for making lunch, don't use it for making love. I mean, it sounds really nice to use something like coconut oil or almond oil, and there are women that even use olive oil. The problem is, again, oils increase infection, not condom compatible, and quite frankly, a lot of times they they don't last very long. They're not all that slippery for a very long period of time. After women exhaust what they have in their medicine cabinet or down to the kitchen, they finally bite the bullet and go to the pharmacy. And it's really confusing because there are just shelves and shelves of all kinds of products that promise all kinds of things. And most women, honestly, they just grab the first product they see at eye level and then run for it and hope that no one yells price check before they make their way out of the store. And inevitably, when they get home, more often than not, they are disappointed because in fact, it does make a difference which product you choose. Now for starters, a lot of products call themselves lubricants and a lot of products call themselves moisturizers and they're not the same thing. A lubricant, which is what I'm gonna be talking about for the rest of this segment, are products that are to be used at the time of sexual activity. A lubricant makes things more slippery. It decreases the friction. It's a barrier, but it doesn't actually change the tissue. A vaginal moisturizer, on the other hand, is to be used in anticipation of sexual activity on a regular basis. And just like you would use a moisturizer on your face to increase the water content in the cells, a moisturizer is not going to work if you just use it once. You have to use it on an ongoing basis. So I'm going to be talking about lubricants. Next segment is going to be about moisturizers. Now in terms of lubricants, there's four basic categories of lubricants. There are the water-based lubricants, which are the majority of the lubricants that you're going to find in the store, silicone-based lubricants, oil-based lubricants, and then the hybrids that are a combination of both. I'm going to focus on the water-based and the silicone-based lubricants because while there are oil-based lubricants out there, honestly, they have the same issues as baby oil and Vaseline that I talked about earlier. So when it comes to a water-based lubricant, there's a lot of them out there, and there are a lot of advantages to them. Number one is that they are readily available. They're very inexpensive. And the nice thing about a water-based lubricant is that if you're not having sex with an actual flesh and blood penis, but in fact you're having sex with a toy, a lot of toys are made out of silicone. And as I'm gonna mention later, you cannot use a silicone lubricant with a silicone toy, but you can use a water-based lubricant. So that's a, that's a big advantage. Also. Water-based lubricants are condom compatible. You can safely use it and know that the latex is not gonna be degraded and it easily washes off of everything. The disadvantage of water-based lubricants is quite frankly, they're not all that slippery. They might start out slippery, but they don't stay slippery. In fact, they get a little bit sticky over time and if you just put water on your hands and rub them together, you know that after a very short period of time, your hands will not be sliding back and forth. So it doesn't last very long. You have to keep reapplying. But the big issue, the big issue with most water-based lubricants is that they can actually irritate and damage 
tissue. And this is why. Water-based lubricants have a lot of additives in order to make them slippery. And those additives increase osmolality. So we're gonna visit eighth grade science for a little bit here. I promise not to take too long on this. But osmolality is the concentration of particles dissolved in a fluid. Water has an osmolality of zero because there's nothing in it but water. The more stuff you put in something, the higher the osmolality. Now, the reason this is important with the lubricant that you put in the vagina is you wanna try as much as possible to match the osmolality of the vaginal cells. Now, a vaginal cell has an osmolality roughly of 300. So if you use a lubricant that has a osmolality that's higher than 300, because of osmosis, remember that, because of osmosis, it actually draws fluid out of the cells and dehydrates the cells in an effort to decrease the osmolality of the high osmolality lubricant. And because of that, it actually does the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. It dehydrates the tissue, it even damages the tissue. It causes irritation, it causes burning, and in some cases the tissue becomes so damaged that you actually increase the risk of getting a sexually transmitted infection. Now you would think that lubricant companies would know this, but this is really new information. So if you look at a lot of the older, more popular lubricants, the osmolality is very often very high. So let's look at a few examples here. Again, the osmolality of the vagina is 300. We wanna be as close to 300 as possible. You can go over a little, we've got some wiggle room, but you don't wanna go way over. KY warming jelly. The osmolality is over 10,000, over 10,000, because all those additives they put in there to not only make it slippery, but to have that chemical warming effect, make the osmolality go sky high, which is why so many women have burning and irritation when they use these warming jelly products. But even plain old KY jelly, the most popular lubricant out there, has an osmolality of over 2,000. So we know that over time, it can break down tissue and dehydrate tissue. Are there products out there with low osmolality? Sure, there are a lot of newer products out there. Some examples, Good Clean Love, Pulse H2O, Silk Natural, System Joe, Slippery Stuff. I'm always updating this list on my website on drstriker.com, but you can find them. And the number one question always is, how do I know? How do I know what the osmolality of a product is? Well, if some products that are, if a product has a high osmolality, it will not advertise that. It's not gonna tell you that. It's not gonna be written anywhere. On the other hand, if a lubricant has a low osmolality, it will tell you that because they're gonna brag about the fact that they have a non-irritating low osmolality. Silicone lubricants are the other category I wanna talk about. And silicone lubricants are very different than water-based lubricants because they don't have osmolality issues. A silicone lubricant is pure silicone. It doesn't need any additives to make it slippery. It doesn't have preservatives. It is simply pure silicone. So what that means is that you don't have to look at what the osmolality is. Quite frankly, all silicone lubricants work very well. All are safe, all are effective, and you don't have to really kind of do the deep dive into which brand you're getting. Um, the other advantage to my mind of, of silicone lubricants is they're much more slippery than water-based lubricants. You don't have to reapply them nearly as often because they last longer. Um, and bottom line is they, they are less irritating. How about the disadvantages? Well, they are a little bit more expensive, but oh my God, you're worth it. Not to mention a little bit goes a long way because they last longer, you don't have to reapply and you're actually gonna stretch that out. So don't get sticker shock. When you go to look at that water-based lube and it's very inexpensive and the silicone-based lube is twice the price, it really isn't because you're gonna use less of it. They are not as readily available. Now you can get them in the drugstore, but you're gonna to have to look a little bit more. And while there might be you know, 20 brands of water-based lubes, there might only be one or two of the silicone-based lubes. Um, Replend Silky Smooth is one that is often in a drugstore. Wet Platinum is another one, and it will be labeled silicone lube. But a lot of times you do need to go online in order to find a silicone lube. And one word of caution, do not put silicone lube in your search engine because you will get something for your carburetor. You must also put in the word 
vaginal silicone lubricant in order to get the products that you want. Um, I'd also mentioned earlier, a lot of women, of course, are using a silicone toy for sexual activity. And if you put the silicone lubricant on the silicone toy, it will ruin the toy. It will cause the surface to bubble. Sometimes it will even separate from the toy itself. And so you can't use it together unless, this is the workaround, what you can do if you really want to use that silicone lube is you take a condom uh, that has no lubricant on it. You put the condom on the toy, and then of course you can use whatever lubricant you want. Um, silicone lubes can stain the sheets and, and clothing, but hopefully you're not gonna be in a pool of it, and you can always put a towel down. Um, and they are really slippery, which is a good thing. We want it to be really slippery, but keep in mind if you're someone that likes sex in the shower, and some of that lube falls on the floor of the shower, and you slip and fall, this is really not something you wanna to have to explain to the paramedics. So buyer beware. So once you decide what lubricant you're going to use, whether it's silicone or water-based, how do you use the lubricant? Well, the number one thing is to put it on prior to sexual activity because a lot of women say, well, let me see how it goes. And so they try and have intercourse without the lubricant. And then of course it hurts like hell. And at that point, the vaginal muscles are clamping down and saying, don't go in there and things dry up even more, so it's kind of game over. So it's really important to put on the lubricant before you attempt intercourse, and be generous with it. Put it all over his penis, I promise he will like it. Take it and put it on your, on your fingers. Put it around the opening of the vagina. Now, a lot of women also use, like to use a lube uh, shooter, and what this is, is basically it's, it's an inserter that you can fill it with lubricant and put it inside the vagina and squirt the lubricant inside the vagina in order to coat the walls of the vagina, but you still should always take a little extra and put it on the opening of the vagina. Now, some people like their lubricants to be warm, which is nice. Now, different than chemical warming, which is bad because it shoots the osmolality sky high, but we're just talking about a warm lube so you don't have to put something cold and icky uh, on your genitals. And there's a couple different ways you can accomplish this. There are a few different um, lubricant systems. Uh, there's one called Pulse, which is hands-free. You put your hand under it. You have to buy their little pods of lubricant, which are nice lubes, and you put it into the, into the device and it just dispenses uh, uh, some lubricant and then you can buy a dispenser that you can put your own lubricant in, or you can go low tech, and you can just take your bottle of lubricant and put it in a bath of warm water in your sink. It all works equally well. It just depends on your personal preference and how much you want to invest. So just to be clear, I am not telling you that you can't use a water-based lube or you shouldn't use a water-based lube. I am just encouraging you that if you're going to use a water-based lubricant, that you choose one that has a low osmolality so you don't get into the burning uh, and tissue damage issues that we very often see with the high osmolality lubes. And face it, a lubricant is not the answer for everyone. As I mentioned, it doesn't change the tissue, it just makes it more slippery. So in spite of using a bucket full of lube, you are still having sandpaper sex. Check out my other videos because there are a lot of other options out there, both hormonal and non-hormonal. And for more information and updates, please go to my website, drstriker.com, or check out my book, SexRx.